All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, in the past, I noticed you guys have really liked my tank tour videos, so today I thought I would go ahead and bring you guys along a complete tank tour of my very low-budget, simplistic, fish-only slash reef aquarium. Anyways, my 36-gallon saltwater aquarium. I'm gonna take you top to bottom through all the fish and the coral that are in there, how this tank came to be, and exactly why it's working the way that it is. So a quick introduction to the tank. If you haven't followed this tank's process, this is an Aquilon 36 gallon aquarium. I bought the tank and stand a few years ago for around $100 during a Black Friday event at PetSmart. It's a 36 gallon bow front tank, meaning the front glass is curved, simple stand, really nothing special. It came with the hood, it came with a little light strip, basic bare bones tank. Well, a couple months ago, I decided to set this tank up that I had empty as a saltwater aquarium, but in contrast to my 120 gallon tank, which if you haven't seen, it's a nice tank. It has all the bells and whistles you could imagine. It has the fancy reef lighting, it has the gyre flow pumps, it has the UV sterilizer, everything. That tank is jam packed with equipment. From the auto top off to the refugium lights, that tank probably has like 20 different things plugged into the wall through it. It's a very complex tank and it does amazing. But I wanted to kind of pivot my point of view when I was going into the second saltwater aquarium and I wanted to just make things easy. My big 120 gallon reef tank can get difficult. It can get overwhelming. There's a lot going on in that tank and I wanted this tank to be different. So when I set up my second saltwater tank, I decided I just wanted to do fish only. Now fish only saltwater tanks are super easy to maintain. You're just taking care of the fish. You don't have to really watch for any of the crazy parameter swings that can sometimes affect corals. So I went down that route. I used some Hawaiian black sand from my other aquarium that I just had sitting dry, as well as some Carib Sea Life Rock shapes. Now this is just basic dry aquarium rock and basic dry aquarium sand. These are materials I actually had. So, so far this whole tank was pretty much free. And actually, this whole tank was basically free other than the livestock. We're gonna get into that. I set this tank up using all equipment I already had, except for I think like a heater or something. Regardless, for filtration on my 120 gallon tank, I have a huge sump down below. This tank, we went easy, I just use a canister filter. No wave makers, no extra flow pumps, a marine land canister filter. For heaters, I went with an Eheim Jaeger 100 watt aquarium heater. Once again, keeping it really basic. Now that the tank's been set up for a little bit though, we are about six months into this aquarium's progress. It's time to get you some present day updates on how this tank is doing. So we're gonna start off at the top and work our way down through the livestock. At the very top of this aquarium is that bow front aquarium hood slash light thing. It came with the tank. Now I did retrofit a light bulb in here. So in this fixture, it only came with one white light bulb, which is simply for viewing the fish. Um, but because this is a saltwater tank, I like that little hint of blue. I went ahead and bought an extra blue light bulb. It's an Aquion modular fixture, so it literally just clicked and then plugged in. Um, it does nothing for growing corals, but we'll get into that later. This light was purely for aquarium aesthetics and for viewing the fish, and it does a great job of doing that. Now, getting back into that equipment, once again, that is that same Eheim Jaeger 100 watt heater. It's a very reliable heater. I love these heaters. I use them in almost all of my tanks. Um, I keep it at a solid around 77 degrees and I've had no issues. Then we have that Marineland canister filter. As you can see, intakes and outtakes are right here. It does a great job of providing enough flow for the tank. I believe it's rated at 220 gallons per hour. Um, it circulates the tank completely fine. Uh, moving down into the stand real quick, we have some miscellaneous fish foods and filter pads down here. But obviously here is that canister filter. This is really what keeps the whole tank alive and it's so basic. It's crazy. A lot of people would lead you to believe that you can't even keep saltwater fish with a canister filter, but uh, six months down the road, I've had no issues at all. Um, as you can see, this tank is so basic, there's only three, three things plugged into this whole aquarium, the heater, the filter, and the light. Now there is some maintenance and upkeep with a tank that's run so basic. Uh, there's no protein skimmer, there's no auto top off, so some of those things have to be done manually. Uh, for example, because there is no protein skimmer, I have to do water changes weekly on this tank. I do water changes on my 120 gallon weekly, so it all works out just fine, honestly. And then I do have to top off the tank manually with RODI water. It's no problem at all. It's so small, the evaporation is so minimal. It's no big deal. Now moving into some of the livestock. This is where this tank really shines. I have it packed full of livestock. Now, we're just gonna start with the fish. Um, my first two statement piece fish in this tank are obviously gonna be the largest of the fish. 
my yellow tang. I made an entire video on this yellow tang. I know he's a little bit big for this aquarium, but there's a reason he's in this 36 gallon tank and that is because he is in here growing out to be in the 120. Long story short, I have a sailfin tang in the 120 and the yellow tang is slightly too small to be added into the 120. With that sailfin tang, there'll be some conflict there. So the idea was he would just be growing out in this tank until he's big enough. You guys get the point though. The next fish is my little Toby Puffer. This guy was in my 120 gallon tank and kind of started the whole idea of setting up this aquarium. And that was because he was starting to eat some of my hard corals in the 120. Thus, him moving into the 36. He's so personable, he's like a little puppy dog, I swear to God. He'll come blow bubbles on the water surface when it's time to feed him. He is such a personal fish. I love this puffer fish, and I'm so happy I was able to set up a tank where I could keep him away from the corals, but still keep him in my house. And I love this little guy, he's so cute. I also have a school of three firefish. These guys are super inexpensive aquarium fish. They're like $10 a piece. They have a nice pop of color and they kind of break up some of the territories in the tank. They are top to mid level swimmers. They like to kind of hang out in the top area of the aquarium. Um, not very personable, but they do add that extra layer of life to the aquarium. I love these guys just because they are so simple. They're very easy to keep. They do dart around the aquarium from time to time. I've always loved their coloration, so I knew I needed some in this aquarium. I also have two Bangai Cardinal fish, another super easy beginner saltwater fish. These guys are so easy to take care of. They eat pretty much anything and their coloration is just awesome. So I knew I had to get a little pair of them for this tank as well. There's also a Royal Grama in this tank. As you can see in this aquarium, I went for color. A lot of the fish in here are very, very vibrant. Um, the Royal Grama is a basslet. It's also a very easy fish to keep. Pretty much all of these fish in this tank are beginner saltwater fish. No one in here is like, super finicky or super hard to take care of. These guys are all super easy fish, which is probably why I've never had any issues with them. Um, the Royal Grama is gorgeous. Half of the fish is purple, half of the fish is bright yellow. A little timid at some times, but always comes out to eat and just a really overall cool fish. I also have a little goby down here. He tends to stick to himself in the rock work and only comes out to eat. However, he is super cool. He sticks his head out of the rocks every once in a while to say hi. Love this guy, really inexpensive, easy to keep fish. Um, loves brine shrimp, by the way like absolutely loves it. And he's pretty personable as well. And then last but not least, I have a fairy wrasse in here. Another basic, easy to keep, colorful saltwater fish. I believe he was really cheap as well. I think he was like $17 to be honest with you. I wanted this tank to be busy. And because we don't have the pop of color in the corals, I needed to bring the pop of color to the fish, which is exactly what I think we did in this tank. So now that you've met all the fish in this tank, let's talk a little bit about the coral and what it's doing in here. So in my 120 gallon tank, I have a ton of this Anthelia coral. It grows like crazy, it's a problem. So every time I do a water change, I like to cut it back, take it out, and I just dump it in this tank. And believe it or not, these Aquion LED lights, which are simply made for viewing the fish, are growing this coral and keeping it alive just fine. It was not done on purpose. It was simply just an accident that kind of happened. But this coral is a super low light coral. I feel like it would literally grow with an iPhone flashlight. It literally will survive under anything, I swear. So in reality, I don't like to call this tank a reef tank because there really is only one species of coral in there and it's actually kind of growing everywhere, but it does add that extra little layer of life. It's cool to look at. It shrinks at night and then it opens back up during the day. Now there are no inverts in this tank simply because the puffer fish is a bully and will try to attack shrimp and some of the larger snails or smaller snails and hermit crabs. I do have a couple snails in here that the puffer fish seems to be leaving alone. However, I don't know how long they're gonna last, to be honest, because these lights on the aquarium are so weak, I don't have an algae issue in here at all, so I don't need that big of a cleanup crew. I would love to put some shrimp in there, but because we have the puffer fish, I've just come to the conclusion that it's not meant to happen. I tried to put a cleaner shrimp in there, and the puffer fish tried to eat it through the bag that I was acclimating in, so it went into the 120. That cleaner shrimp is doing awesome. I have two cleaner shrimp in the 120 now. They're doing good, but yeah, inverts in that tank, not really gonna happen. Surprisingly, that's pretty much the whole tank. I mean, it's super, super easy. It's almost a freshwater setup that is working for salt water. On paper, a lot of people would say it can't work, but six months down the road, the tank is thriving. I think the secret to keeping tanks like this is definitely knowing what you're doing. I mean, I came from the 120. I had an idea of what I was doing with saltwater fish, especially, um, but I also think the key is water changes. With the canister filter, it does a good job of keeping the tank clean. However, I try to clean the canister filter out every single month, and then once again, I do water changes every single week. I think that's the key to keeping a saltwater tank without a protein skimmer. Even though it's a little bit more maintenance, it still is less equipment maintenance, if that makes sense. 
and not only does it keep the tank simpler but it's not that much more maintenance than I was already doing with my 120 so I didn't feel a need to you know throw a skimmer on the tank throw an auto top off on the tank do all the stuff like that when I'm more than capable of just doing those tasks myself. I don't feed this tank super heavy either. You probably saw them eating on some nori, which is seaweed. The yellow tang and the puffer fish love seaweed. Other than that, they get a mix of marine fish pellets, some brine shrimp, um, pretty much everything my 120 eats, these guys eat as well. But I think that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed checking out the 36 gallon tank. If you guys have any questions, do not forget to leave them down below. If there's something you want me to touch on a little bit more, I'd be happy to explain it in the comment section if I didn't explain it enough in this video for you. But, like I said, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching once again, and good bye.